Yes, now it's perfect. Mm -hmm. So again, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Katia Valle, based in Sao Paulo. I work for the marketing department at Cambridge. And today we have the pleasure of having with us Veronica Teodorov, one of the authors of Global Changer, our new series for teenagers. And the topic is going to be learning to learn, learning and retaining vocabulary with teenagers. I'm going to ask you, uh, Veronica, to go to the next slide, please. And I would like to welcome you all. And I would like to know where you are joining from. Please use the chat box and tell us where you are connecting from. And Veronica, I would like to ask your help mm -hmm. to tell me. Ah, we have people from Uruguay, as now I can see here in my mobile. Yeah. Great. Wow, Chief. Czech Republic. Yeah. Jundiaí. Great. Very, very international, right? Today. Yes. Good, good. Very we good. We are so happy to see so many of you from all over the place. Miriam, hello, Miriam. Yeah, Petrolina. Great to have you here with us. It is. All right. Please speak, uh, keep. Uh, sending us this message where you are joining from. Ceará, great. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to get late because Veronica has several things to share with you. So if we can go to the next slide, please, Veronica. Mm -hmm. A little bit of housekeeping. So please use the Q&A tool to send your questions while the webinar. And by the end of the session, Veronica will answer the, the questions, right? You yes. will have certificates for this webinar. So by the end of the presentation in the chat box, we will, uh, you will have a link there for a feedback form. And after answering the feedback for us, you will get your certificate. We, you will download your certificate. Uh, next slide, please, Veronica. We would like also to inform you that this is the second webinar uh, with authors of Global Changer. Previously, we had Mauricio Shiroma. If you didn't have the chance to watch the webinar, it is there in our YouTube channel, Cambridge Brazil. This webinar here is being recorded and we will upload the recording in the YouTube channel, Cambridge Brazil also. And don't miss in October, we will have Viviane Kirmeliene with Creative Thinking. And in November, we will have Denise Santos with cross-curricular content. So pay attention to your inboxes and wait for the invitation for next webinars. Moving on, I believe it's time to hand it over to you, Veronica. Thanks very much for accepting our invitation and have a good presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Katja, for having me. Thank you all for you know, uh, taking your time and spend an hour here with us learning and sharing experiences. I really want your participation, so feel free to send messages on the chat. And uh, if you want to, to share any of your classroom ideas, we'll have a moment for that as well. So first, to start with, we decided to focus this uh, webinar today on vocabulary. So how, we, how can we help our students, our teenage students, learn and retain vocabulary? But then you say, but why vocabulary? There's so many things we can focus on, but today we decided to bring vocabulary. First, because in my humble opinion, I think this is something that students notice right from the beginning, that they are making progress in their learning. And for a very simple reason, because they see lots and lots and lots and lots of words that they can recognize and they know that they know the meaning of those words. I remember once I had a student that decided to take a course in London. And then when he got there, they had, of course, the placement test to see where he was going to start his course. 
And then when the person started asking him questions, it was like, so what's your favorite fruit? And then he started bananas, apples, watermelon. And then he started talking about all the fruits in him. He started listing all the fruit, fruits that he knew. And then she asked, oh, nice. And uh, do you play any sports? And he said, yes, I play tennis, I play football, I play volleyball, I play handball. Again, he started telling the lady all the words that he knew you know, about sports. And then when he returned to Brazil, he said, the lady was super impressed because I had a very good vocabulary. Because this is what he also noticed. He knew so many words and that he could make like, he could see that he was making progress on their learning, okay? Especially in the lower levels. Because um, I usually say that sometimes when we get to the intermediate level, students go like, oh, we are not progressing anymore. And when we are at the basic level, we learn, 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 learn. But then students, sometimes they don't notice that they are still learning. So if we show them more vocabulary words, if we present them with alternatives to the words that they are already familiar with, they will also feel this progress, you know? So when we talk about teaching and learning vocabulary, we must have in mind that uh, for students to communicate, they have to have proper vocabulary in order not to have misunderstandings, right? And how as teachers can we help our students, especially the teenagers? Nowadays, they have information all around. Internet, you know, YouTube, Instagram, they have lots of English series, everything's going on at the same time. So they are, you know, bombed with a lot of information. So how can we help them to also use this information that they already have access to. Now, I'm almost sure you are familiar with the Cambridge Life Competences Framework. And this is what is going to help our students become better learners and speakers of English, okay? If you know it, I mean, just a quick, you know, um, uh, info on that. The, the framework is made up of six competences, right? That describe how the 21st century student learn and how we can help them learn even better. They are going to develop the 21st century skills or the life skills, the competences that they need and how they can develop them during all the process of their learning, from the basic level to the most uh, advanced levels. So here we have the, the six competences, right? That is creative thinking, critical thinking, learning to learn, communication, collaboration, social responsibilities, and emotional develop, development, sorry. Today, we are going to focus on the learning to learn. So what is the learning to learn content? Learners develop practical skills to support and take control of their learning and reflect on their own progress. So here, very simply put, you have three main areas inside the learning to learn competence, that is developing skills and strategies, taking control of learning and reflecting on and evaluating on learning. But today we are going to focus on a bit more you know, of the detail and we're going to see the developing skills and strategies for learning. And what is it? When we talk about skills and strategies for learning, we have to include important techniques, such as making notes, story and retrieving information, as well as techniques for learning and remembering information. When we talk about ELT, learners also benefit from using strategies to help them understand and communicate in English. But we know that as Brazilian uh, Portuguese speakers, we, once we teach our students those techniques, those strategies, they will probably take them to the other um, subjects as well. So they're going to use that in Portuguese, for example, in literature, okay? 
And there are various methods for engaging in these techniques. And learners need to experiment and choose the one which best suits their own personal style, needs, and resources. We know that we have different kinds of students in the classroom, and we need to help them understand what will make them learn in an easier way, in a way that can fit their own style. Okay? So I would like to ask you a question now. If you can put it on the chat, what is one technique you taught your students when introducing new vocabulary. Is there anything you showed them? I don't know, a strategy, a technique, something that you used in your classes and that you have like a good answer, a good return from your students. Repeating exercises and conversations. Good, especially if we're talking about language chunks, right, Brandon? Mm -hmm. Anything else? Drills, yes, have you? Daniela, pictures, right? Visual aids, getting them to write sentences using their vocabulary, exactly. This is what we usually do, videos, songs, right, Fernanda? Note-taking, revision techniques. Thank you, Mila. All right, so let me show you what I have here for you. Write the new word in a sentence, okay? So we give them the word and then students have to come up with a sentence using that word. Word cards, they can be like flashcards, right? Okay, nowadays with technology, we can use Quizlet, right? We don't need to write on papers anymore. I used to write on papers and show them, right? Like word cards. Draw an image to represent the word. There are students that really like drawing. So why not, instead of just writing, drawing the image, right? Sing a song, as one of you said, write a glossary, word wall, and many others. So this is what we did with Global Changer. Global Changer has a section called Learn to Learn. And we are going to focus here on vocabulary. Okay? In this session, uh, Learn to Learn, you're going to find some strategies and techniques. One example is this one here called Global Changer 1. Finding examples of new words. Mm. So we have Find examples of new words in different places. For example, on websites, in videos, in songs, in this book. One example, healthy foods we saw this year. Where can you see information about healthy food? Oh, on that blog, foodblogforteens.com. They saw us at the park. Where did you see that example sentence? Ah, an actor in the TV series, always on vacation. But I saw her. Where did you see it? In my English textbook, unit four. So this is something that will show students that they can see the language in context and in different contexts. They can find that word in many different places, not only in the dictionary or in the book, right? Some other examples here. In Global Changer Startup, as students are very low level, <clears throat> we suggest the use of a jar, the word jar. Uh, we say that it's important to look at new words every day. So they can write the new words in small pieces and put them in the jar. And then every day they choose a word, read it and remember it. And then from this activity in the jar, we can move to more elaborate activities as the ones we saw before. So for example, you can ask the student to grab a word and then write a sentence, or you can have like a game and say, grab a small piece, read the word, and then two groups, they draw the word, you know, and then they can come up with the sentence. So you have like three different techniques with the same word, but in different um, classroom dynamics. And you can use the three of them, you know, all together 
and make it more you know, lively and fun for the students, right? They, I, I think they really remember things you know, better when they are not pressured to remember what, so what's this, what is this? So having this fun activity in class, having students drawing, it's gonna be you know, super fun. You're gonna love it. And another possibility is vocabulary categorization. For example, you can categorize, categorize groups of words with other words. So for example, kick, throw, catch, walk, run. Use them with nouns, hand and foot. So what goes with food? Oh, I can kick, I can walk, I can run. What about with the hand? I can throw and catch. So you say, well, what about the head? I don't know, it can move left and right. So you find ways where they can categorize their learning. Then here, I'm going to give you two more examples, okay? Learn to learn, record your vocabulary. Nowadays, students have a lot of technology available for them. So if they have a mobile phone, for example, they can use and record the words that they learned. They can use and record the, themselves saying the words in a sentence, and then they can listen to the words and to the sentences and review them. They can even exchange messages, you know, one student with another in English using the words that they learn. They can also challenge each other. For example, one say a word, and then the other has to say the meaning of the word, right? So, so many possibilities that you have. And here, another one, make a sticky note dictionary. Write new vocabulary on sticky notes. So on the one, or the, on the other side, write the translations. Some teachers like translations, some teachers don't. It's up to you. If you think your students will benefit from translation, Go ahead. If you think, no, it's not necessary. I think if they draw or if they glue an image, it's enough. It's perfectly fine. We always have to uh, see our students' needs and help them using you know, what they have for uh, how they can learn things in a way that suits them. Remember, this is what we spoke right at the beginning. But now, as Brazilian Portuguese speakers, we may use some other techniques. Any ideas? You can go to the chat. Because for now, we talked about very general things, right? Because storytelling, okay, Yuri? Very general that you can use with students in the Czech Republic, in Brazil, in Uruguay, right? But what about something very specific for Brazilian students. What would you say? What would you use with them? Hmm? Tell me. What else from storytelling? Mm -hmm. Games, hangman, spelling game. Mm -hmm. mm. I would go a bit more in a detail. Let me show you and let's see if you agree with me. Well, Global Changer brings suggestions on how to use these techniques to help students remember and retain your vocabulary, right? For Brazilian students, opposites using prefixes because as Portuguese is a Latin language, we have the prefixes and in English, we have a lot of them as well. So why not use them and show students that this is a great opportunity for them to learn new words and expand their vocabulary. So here, for example, in Global Changer 2, we have Opposites using prefixes. They change the meaning of words, keep a record of them, their meanings, and some example words. So we have the prefix this. So we say disagree, dishonest, right? 
Mm-hmm, Yudi, we'll get there. So, what other prefixes can we say? On, in, um, impossible, possible, impossible. We can have like dis disconnect, connect, disconnect. So using the prefixes that are similar to Portuguese will help them remember and retain the information because they are going to, you don't need to translate if you don't want to, right? But you can show them that they can relate from one language to another, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So one more thing that we can do besides opposites, right? Where is it? There you go, you, the and Fernanda, that we're talking about cognates and false cognates. Another example is by explaining the use of transparent words. So some authors call them transparent words, some authors call them cognates, they're both the same, okay? Some words might be similar in Portuguese and in English. Sometimes words are the same, like as in radio, rádio, okay? We have um, another example like connect, conectar, internet, internet. And sometimes they're different as in pretender, intend, fingir, pretend. So words that have similar forms and meaning are called transparent words and they can increase the vocabulary of students. So this is something that we have to be very careful, otherwise students will just start uh, saying a word in Portuguese as if it were in English. For example, they can say, ah, liquidificador, liquidificator. And this is not right, okay? So they have to be aware that sometimes words are similar in form and in meaning, but sometimes they're different. They can be similar, but they're different, right? It's always like this. You spot that, that, you know, that joke. You spot a Brazilian English learner abroad when the person is going to enter the, I know, the museum or the restaurant and there is the push or pull. And then we go, we just stop because our brains go always like, with, because push, it's not pushar, right? Push is empurrar. And then our brains go crazy and we always get confused. So then we just stop and think, right? Because this is in our minds already. We know the meaning of that in Portuguese because this is the first thought that comes to our mind, but it's not the correct action, okay? So using transparent words is super useful. But make sure that you make students aware that there are differences, okay? And then they have to learn how to spot those differences. Now, even though some words might be above level for students, for Brazilian students, actually, they are not difficult to understand. For example, if you look for the word monitor, this is an example for the Cambridge Dictionary, okay? The word monitor, as in the computer screen, okay? Can you see this uh, green circle here? This B2 indicates the level of the word according to the CEFR, okay? So this is the level of the word. This is a B2 word. Right, but I'm sure any student, any Brazilian student that knows what a monitor is, will understand that monitor refers to the screen in the computer, right? Differently from students from other languages, maybe, I don't know, Arabian languages or um, Chinese, Japanese that don't use this vocabulary. Here in Brazil, we are used to using the technology vocabulary. So we use a computer, mouse, keyboard, monitor, and those words might be above level for them 
imagine he, he is like an A2 student, but I'm sure he can understand this B2 word, okay? So if you are writing, for example, one lesson for your students and you want to check the level of the word, just go to the dictionary, okay? And you will see this B2 can be A1, A2, B1, B2, C1, C2, okay? Now, we can also teach students how to look. Yeah, Fernanda, it is. How to look the, for the right meaning of a word in the dictionary. Because when we teach our students how to use a dictionary, we have also to teach them to find the right meaning, right? When I was uh, looking for the example of monitor to use on my presentation, the first example that appeared was the verb to monitor, right? And then when you scroll down a bit, it came the word, the noun, monitor for the computer screen. So this is something we have to show our students, not only because we might have a noun and the verb, but also because we can have differences in pronunciation, right? When we say like uh, to process and process and the, I mean to process and I need a process to get into easy. We have those words that have a difference in pronunciation in the dictionary. You also find the correct pronunciation for the word if it's a verb or if it's a noun, okay? So far, so good. Do you have any questions you want to ask? So far, all good, Veronica. All good? Okay, good, good. So let's move on now. Okay. Thank you, Brandon. Let's move now and see. How can we have help our teenage students learn and retain vocabulary? We have here, if you remember, this is just a brief review on learning to learn. Developing skills for strategies, taking control of own learning, reflecting on and evaluating on learning. Here, if we think about vocabulary, developing skills and strategies, we saw many strategies, techniques, and how we can use them in the classroom, different activities, things that we can do with our students to help them retain vocabulary, right? But I would go a bit further here and suggest you when writing your lesson plan, for example, that you always set a name, write down the technique you want to use, and think about the result you want to achieve. Because as teachers, we always prepare our lesson plan. Yeah, I remember like, by the end of the lesson, students will be better able to, yeah, we all do this. And here, when we think about the 21st century skills, the life skills, the competences that students need to achieve a goal, Try always to think about these three steps, okay? So, first of all, what's the aim of this um, activity? Are you going to use strategies for learning or are you going to ask students to show, um, I mean, to reflect on their learning? What part of the learning to learn competence are you going to focus on? Today we're focused on uh, retaining information, right? So we're talking about vocabulary, developing skills and techniques for retaining information. But what if you want to have students thinking and reflecting on their learning? What if you want students to, um, what was the other one? Oh, I can't remember that one. Okay, taking control, okay, of their own learning, right? What do you want your students to achieve by the end of the lesson? If you want, for example, to use effective strategies for learning and retaining information, what is the technique you're going to use? 
oh, I want my students to record vocabulary in an appropriate way. One way, oh, can be in a vocabulary notebook, vocabulary flashcard app, what other techniques you can use. I'm going to have uh, my students prepare their own word jar. I want them to make lists, categorizing words. I want them to make, uh, to draw an image represented. I want them to write a glossary. So all the techniques and the activities that I suggested you today, the business approach, personalizing the vocabulary is an efficient technique. Exactly. So you see our colleagues here are helping us with very good ideas that you can also use in your classes, right? And then why? What is the result that you want to achieve? So um, by the end of the lesson, my students will use, for example, a vocabulary flashcard app to learn words related to, I don't know, uh, holiday uh, activities. Vacation activities, okay? So, or no, I, you, I want my students to write, um, to, to prepare a list of categorized words related to food and drinks. I want to use a vocabulary flashcard app so my students can learn and retain vocabulary related to clothes, for example. So you can think of what is the aim, what is the technique you're going to use, and the result. Of course, why are you going to do that? Because you want to see if it works, because if it doesn't work, you can change something, okay? Let's see what Fernanda said. Write a chart with true and false cognates or a memory game with many of true and false cognates. Exactly. Very good idea, Fernanda. Thanks for sharing. And this is it. When we also, we can also ask, oops, we can also ask our students how they would like to record their vocabulary. This is also super possible. You know, students, especially teenagers, they like to participate. Sometimes you prepare a very fun activity, something you think they would take like 20 minutes and then go like, oh, five minutes and then you go wow what now as teachers especially brazilian teachers i say that we have a lot of jogo de cintura and we always have you know that card here and we say okay let me now work with the vocabulary and come up with an activity that they can interact and they can prepare any day so for example if you have access to a um, computer room Take them to the computer room. Let them create a vocabulary flashcard app. If you don't, and you have paper, you know, slips of paper, try to come up with a vocabulary jar. So we can also use those activities, those techniques, those strategies, even when we have like a spare time and we want to give them extra practice. So vocabulary is something that students really enjoy learning. You know, when you think about, oh, Present perfect, oh, conditionals. Even the names, I think, for them may sound boring, but vocabulary, it's always related to pictures, you know, to nice things. So take advantage of this and give them more work, things that they can work on so that they can retain and you know, remember what they learned in class. Now, to wrap up, when teachers provide students with the techniques they can use to learn and retain vocabulary, they help learners understand what suits best for them, developing their autonomy and self-direction. Autonomy and self-direction are words that are on the um, life uh, competences, you know, the Cambridge life competences. And I thought that I should bring them to you because and nowadays, as I mentioned before, students are bombed with lots of things, right? They are learning more things. They are, um, uh, they are exposed to a lot of things. So why not take advantage of that 
And the, the point that they are becoming even more autonomous, they are learning for themselves and show them how to use this information for good. What they can do with this information. You know, one activity that I think is super uh, nice and sometimes students don't even notice. For example, when you are on Netflix, you're watching something and then you just stop and it comes that um, those screens showing you some of their shows, like, oh, the series about blah, blah. blah. And then at the bottom, it goes like um, family, cozy, I don't know, uh, documentary. There are lots of words that appear there to describe the kind of um, program that they are presenting you. It is something we don't even notice. But it's there, and you start reading and say, oh, nice. Ooh, I learned some very new words, you know, while I was watching that. And I started taking notes to show my students. And I said, oh, you see, that's, and I can tell you that uh, there's so much like new vocabulary for them. And they will be like, awesome. When they see, like, they see that and they say, oh, I recognize this. I saw that on Netflix, right? So this is something that you can use. And then get that word and see where else you can find that word. There was an activity like this, yeah, before that I showed you. Let's see. Sure, Fernanda, I can show the competencies. And yes, Katja, can you uh, put the link for the Cambridge Life Competences? Sure, I will. Somewhere so they can download it, yeah? I will show them again because we still have some minutes. This one, Fernanda, yes? Okay, so we have creative thinking. Yeah, critical thinking. So in creative thinking, they learn actively, uh, they actively participate in creative activities, generating ideas, using them to solve problems. When we have the critical thinking, Learners identify patterns and relationships, evaluate ideas, and use skills to solve problems. Then the learning to learn, right? The, the practical skills to learn, in this case, vocabulary. Take control of their learning and reflect on the progress. Communication. Students uh, choose the most appropriate language to use in different situations, manage conversations effectively, and express themselves clearly and confidently. Collaboration. Learners work well together in groups through actively taking part in group activities, listening to others, sharing tasks, finding solutions to problems. Social responsibilities. Learners recognize and describe different roles and responsibilities in a variety of groups and understand cultural and global issues. And emotional development. Learners describe and manage emotions and develop positive relationships with others. Okay. Uh, this is something that is for people that work with the BMCC. The life competences, you can see that is totally aligned with the BMCC competence, right? So it is something that you can use with when you are preparing classes, because all of them, if you see on the link that Katja is going to share with us, that it's the, the handbook for the life competences, you will see that all of them will bring you examples like this one that I showed you here. So in the learning to learn, the example is using effective strategies for learning and retaining information. I give you the technique. I mean, they give us the technique that I'm showing you, records vocabulary, and then the result. So you're going to find examples of all of them. And I think this is huge. I mean, this is super helpful and useful when you're preparing your classes, when you're thinking about uh, preparing students. Okay, there you go. Katja just shared here on the chat. I think you can uh, also, I, I think you can all access, right, Katja, from here. Mm. Okay, so just check if you can access. Okay, and you will see all the descriptions for all the competences 
and including the one, the one that I shared with you today. Okay. So this is what I have for you. And I really wanted to hear now, which of the techniques do you find most useful for your group of students today? You can see the link. It's here on the chat, Brendan. Can you, can you see right up above your message, Brendan? Can you see it? No? Katja, I don't know what happens, but they can, can't see the link. Yeah, they should be seeing the chat. But if you Google Cambridge Life Competencies Framework, it's very mm -hmm. easy to find. I will write it mm -hmm. in the ah, chat. Okay. I think Leo also shared that as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Okay, now I can see, he said. <laughs> I think now they cannot. Yay, good, Tainara. Thank you for telling us. All right. But before you go and see the lab competence, just go back to the chat and tell me one thing, one of those techniques, one of activity, one game, something that I shared with you today that you would like to test with your students, that you are going like, well, tomorrow I have a class and I want to try this. With vocabulary. Every day, Fernanda. Well, that's very good. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. It's nice to hear that, you know, because we need, as teachers, we need something that we can use like right away, you know. I know I've been teaching like a lot. I was a teacher that started like seven in the morning and stopped like 10 p.m. So I had lots of classes and we do get tired. Sometimes we can just think about new stuff anymore. So joining this kind of webinars where you leave the room with a lot of ideas and practical things that you can use is useful and helpful for you guys that are in the classroom. So I really hope you can start like tomorrow or even today, maybe. Uh, using the things that you learned today, right? Here, I'm leaving you my contact details, my email, veronica at kinderpublishing.com, and I have a profile on Instagram called De Professora Autor, uh, where I help teachers that want to become materials writers. So I was a teacher and I became a materials writer. So I know that lots of teachers uh, prepare their own materials, they create their own stuff, and sometimes they want to publish, but they don't know how to start. So on my profile, I give you some hints and tips on how to do it, and also teach you some very good language that you need to know once you start you know, producing materials. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time to join us this Friday afternoon, very late, I think, in the Czech Republic. And uh, Uruguay, I'm not that sure. I think only one hour, two hours, right? So thank you so much. Katja, I think it's up to you now. Thank you very much, Veronica. I don't see any questions. Thanks very much for this wonderful webinar with so many ideas you shared with teachers. I was having a look here at the chat. Uh, people motivated to try things next week. Yeah. And um, going back to the presentation, I would like just to show them uh, that if they are interested in Global Changer, our new series for teenagers, you can look at the, at the web page for the series with lots of details. If you feel like writing us, please send us an email to atendimento.br at Cambridge. Dot org. It will be a pleasure to talk to you too. Uh, Fernanda is saying, can you repeat, please? Oh, yes, I wrote that already. Uh, the professor. Uh, yes, oh, oh, right. yes, that's the one. Good. All right. Thank right. you, Veronica. No well, we thank you all. First of all, thank you, Veronica, for one more interesting webinar. We thank you all for being here with us. And hope to see you again next month with one more webinar in the Global Changer series. 
Enjoy the weekend. Enjoy Friday. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. See you. Bye-bye.